Hi, this is Natural Health for All Ages. I'm Dr. Wagner, uh, Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine, which is a branch of medicine that looks to help the body to heal itself naturally. And today our topic is natural health for the, the cold and flu season. Today I have a guest speaker, Linda Ryan, which is a, a Australian trained naturopath as well as an herbalist. And she's here to help, you know, discuss how to keep yourself healthy. Linda, do you want to add anything about what you do? Right. Um, yes, I'm a naturopath uh, trained in Australia and a registered herbalist in America. So I have come from the old uh, school of um, barefoot herbalism and right up through where I discovered in Australia they did formal schools of training in, in herbalism, uh, which they finally now have in America and doing a really great job. So uh, thank okay. you. Okay. So. Um, you know, with the cold and flu season, it's, you know, starting getting cold and rainy. A lot of people are getting sick. So, you know, just general preventive things is, you know, generally wash your hands, of course. Germs get carried that way, you know, covering your mouth. Um, you know, even with, um, you know, if you're shopping, a shopping cart outside in the sun and the fresh air is going to have a lot less germs because the air and the sun are going to be disinfecting as well. Um, and I, do you have any favorite things to help prevent colds and flus? I sure do. Um, yes, the shopping carts is a big one. I used to think, oh, you know, people are germ freaks and all. Well, I have found myself needing to, to be more um, uh, careful with uh, public places. And that seems to be always when I get sick is when I'm in a public place or especially traveling. Airplanes. The, yeah, <laughs> elevator buttons, going into hotels, yes. the, the knobs on the hotels, the maids don't clean those things. So um, my travel kit is always, you know, it's some um, just plain alcohol hand wipes that are in my purse. So they come on the airplane with me. And so washing your hands as often as possible and being conscientious. If you are in a grocery store, you know, even if you've wiped off the cart handle, um, when you start picking up items on or putting your hand on the deli counter or anything like that, you know, be careful not to rub your eyes, um, pick anything out of your teeth. Even scratching your ears can introduce germs into your environment. Um, you're very, you know, mu mucosal and sensitive environment. So just being careful to be mindful of that. Um, I find that that really does help. And, and also just having a healthy immune system to begin with because obviously if your immune system is ready to fight something off, exactly. you're going to get less sick than, you know, someone who's, you know, their immune system is down. So like if there's a cold going around or a flu, not everybody gets it or That's they get it so milder. True. Right, exactly. And, and, and your immune system depends on your inner uh, ecology, your health, the foods you eat. Um, a lot of foods are your medicine. So um, I think we can start talking about the, the nutrients. Um, if you can't possibly get enough vitamin C to take a supplement. And vitamin D has been showing an amazing mm -hmm. um, response with people in their immune systems. Especially with the flu. So, um, you know, vitamin D, if you're not out in the sun or if you're in a state like, you know, Michigan, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> where you're not getting a lot of sun or if, you, if you're in work all day and maybe you have a weekend and maybe it's raining then right. um, to take a supplement of vitamin D, which right. you can take a couple thousand IUs and acutely and it's not going to have any side effects so right and a lot of people are vitamin D deficient these days right. because we were taught to slip slop slap you know slip on um, clothing and you know slop on sunscreen and slap on a hat and we avoided the sun like the plague but now safe sun is is coming back into fashion um, 10 minutes you know uh, even in the winter time um, so you're getting a little vitamin D because that is the best form of vitamin D is when your body converts it so if you can't, then a, a good supplement in vitamin D. And probably 800, even up to 1600 I use as a good uh, preventative dose um, of vitamin D unless you have a preference. And it doesn't That's usually taste bad, even if you get a liquid drops yes, for kids. Yeah. They'll generally take it readily and not fight you for right. it because it really doesn't have a lot of taste or you can drop it on their food. Um, you know, if you're older, you can take the capsules or the tablets. Um, you know, but that's an easy way. It's an easy one to, yeah. to get. Vitamin C, also like the chewables. I think this is a chewable. Um, 
you know, so of course that will help the immune system. Your body uses a lot of vitamin C when you're sick. You just want to be, be careful with the chewable ones because if you do the chewable too much, you can destroy your teeth because it's ascorbic acid. It is an acid. So you want to be careful that if you're giving chewables, you rinse your mouth out afterwards. Don't brush your teeth right afterwards. You're brushing the acid <laughs> right into your teeth. You know, so just be careful a little bit with that, um, with the chewables. So if you've been exposed uh, or been in the germ pool, um, there are, are those things you can do um, that you don't even have to go to a health food store. A lot of places will have um, real quick, easy things uh, to pick up. Of course, when you, I do want to mention about um, the, any kind of soap is antibacterial as long as you wash for 20 seconds. So they say either sing a chorus of uh, Happy Birthday or another chorus uh, option is uh, Old McDonald Had a Farm. <laughs> That's about 20 seconds. You do not have to use the antibacterial triclosan containing soaps. Um, I'm um, totally opposed to those and, and won't go into the details, but well, any simple Well, it can destroy some soap. of your good bacteria. Exactly. You know, the antibacterial. So, and it's, I mean, it's, sometimes it's hard. Like this one doesn't say antibacterial, which is it's good. It's not. It's hard to find mm -hmm. a lot of soaps <laughs> that don't say antibacterial right. because people think it's, you know, healthy. Um, but if you use like a soap, just a gentle soap, you know, long enough, it will do the job without having the chemicals in it. So if you feel uh, something coming on, and, and this is a real key point, is know your body and if you wake up in the morning and your eyes are a little drier or it, it just seems a little drier in the throat area um, or you just feel more malaise and you go, get up and you ignore it and go to work you know by the end of the day um, you might really know that yes yeah, something's coming on however by the time you get out of work there might be um, no options to to stop at a health food store and, and pick up specific products for colds and flus. So um, hydrogen peroxide is antimicrobial. Um, it will help with uh, killing any bacteria that is trying to burrow into your tissue. And one I like is um, just a, a minty flavor hydrogen peroxide that you can get at any drugstore or, you know, grocery store pharmacy. Does anybody who's tried the regular knows how bad it tastes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but this also, you can use hydrogen peroxide in your right. ears, especially for exactly. kids. Exactly. Which they don't have to taste it then because they, you know, it's very metallic tasting. But um, if you want something that's a little bit more flavorful um, and you're going to gargle yeah. with it, then that's... Um, and just a little bit it will right. really <laughs> foam up. And I'm glad you mentioned that about the ears. That was a, a German uh, protocol, and, and it's quite successful as putting the hydrogen peroxide and in the ear. And you want to do it very soon rock. at the onset because exactly. that's when they find that it works. Right. If you wait too long and it's a full-blown cold, right. it's not as effective. So what happens if you do wait too long and it's a full-blown cold? <laughs> <laughs> you get up the next morning and, and you can't breathe, your throat is sore every time you try to swallow, uh, you're just dragging through the day. Um, ideally, it would be great to, to really crank up your immune system and support the, the tissues and use antimicrobials and anti-inflammatories. When we think of herbs, we think of them by their actions. So that's why I'm naming the actions that you want. If you've got a fever, you want to support that fever with what we call a diaphoretic. A diaphoretics uh, keep the body warm internally and they will actually cause you to break out in a sweat, which can be good because sweat cools the body down. The air hits the, the perspiration and it can actually reduce the Evaporates. fever. Of course, if the fever does get too high, you have to be able to intervene with medical um, intervention there. But a low fever is, is actually helpful. A lot of people, you know, their kids have like 101 degree temperature and they're, oh my goodness, they have a fever. but. For every degree you go up, your immune system is increased about 10 times because all that heat, you know, is driving all your metabolism and so your immune system is really working overtime. So, you know, a little bit of fever is very helpful, mm -hmm. um, but too high, of course, because it has some dangers. So, you know, just be careful of that, but don't try to knock a fever down as soon as it appears. Right, exactly. And it's feed a fever, starve a cold, 
Mm. Correct. <laughs> and when we do calorie restriction, we actually engage our immune system more. So um, in the old saying, feed a fever, starve a cold, is, is good, even though they didn't know at the time that you were actually um, engaging your immune system by doing calorie restriction. So um, addressing the symptoms and the general immune system would be the, the route I would take. Um, there's some wonderful products at a health food store that you can get. And if you have access to a wonderful practitioner in your area, such as Dr. Wagner, you're in Troy, correct? Rochester. Rochester now, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, then you could uh, get some practitioner quality products, which, which usually are, are much more concentrated and um, they're, they're heavier extracts. But the things that you can get at health food stores, it helps to know if you've got a virus or a, a, a bacteria, but either way, charging up your immune system is, is going to be beneficial. A lot of people have heard of echinacea, and I have um, an echinacea product here that's a, a practitioner quality one. Now, to know a good echinacea, if you bite into the tablet or take a taste of the liquid, it should profusely make your mouth tingle almost uncomfortably tingle if it's really a potent one. That's the alkyl amides in there, which are considered the active ingredient, and they um, impart more of an analgesic activity, but it feels like a tingle. And echinacea is not fast acting. Uh, we at one time thought it, it was. We still are in the process of doing research on high, high dose in an acute phase. Acute means sudden onset, the early onset. Um, with high dose echinacea, but preventatively, the trials are coming out quite positively now. So, you know, as we go forward, we learn how our herbs work best. Echinacea is not fast acting. Um, Which I also know a lot of people who use them like a week on, a week off, a week on, a week yes. off during the cold and flu season. That's a great way to do it. And it all also saves money. Um, it is safe to use echinacea straight through. Um, the founder of the company that makes this particular echinacea, they call him Mr. Echinacea in Australia. <laughs> and this company is now in America. It's called Mediherb. And Carrie Bone has taken echinacea straight for probably about 14 years now because he's part of a research project. <laughs> he's using himself as a guinea pig. And he's um, never had a problem with the myth that you hear that taking echinacea long-term straight through will overstimulate your immune system um, and, and burn it out basically so that it's not active when you need it, but that's been proven not true. The other myth, if I can just, while I'm on the topic of echinacea myth, is that it is okay to use in autoimmune mm -hmm. conditions. So I won't elaborate on that, but um, the way it acts is not to overstimulate your immune system, it actually modulates your immune system. Now these are so, tablets. You yeah, can also you get the echinacea in, in liquid form. In a liquid, which is a tincture. And a lot of your products will have echinacea in it. The fluids, right, because it's known as a good, you know, immune stimulator. I think this one has some. Fluids, yes. That's bone set. Um, yeah, yeah, it has yeah. some echinacea in it. So there's, this is another, uh, it's a professional herbal a brand, with fluids. Yeah. But it does have the echinacea in it. So if you don't mind the taste of the alcohol, you can even, even um, if it's a tincture, put some hot water in the cup, and then you can just, you know, drop your dropperfuls into the hot water and let the, the alcohol evaporate a little bit so you don't get that extremely alcohol, um, you know, taste. And a lot of kids don't like that right. either. So you can let right. it evaporate off. You're not getting that much alcohol, but it is strong. Right. Yeah, it's not so going to evaporate do it that all way. the alcohol, but it will dissipate 40% at least of it that way. Um, my one-two punch when I know that I'm getting something, even in the er acute early stage, I don't wait for it to, to get a grip on me. Um, there's a product, um, well, a herb, and a blend of herbs in this product, um, but andrographis is the one that I'm uh, specifically going to talk about. Andrographis is an Ayurvedic herb, a herb from India. Um, the, the medicine is called, the form of medicine is called Ayurvedic medicine. And andrographis is a herb that is fast acting and it really does engage the immune system. But it's a very cooling herb. It's not something you would want to use in a chronic condition where someone has, say, 
um, cancer or asthma or things that their body tends to go a bit cold um, unless you really warm up and balance it with other warming herbs but um, andrographis is, is a very fast acting herb and if um, you can get to a practitioner that carries andrographis um, or other companies would, would have a good quality one. I'm not sure of the, I'm sorry, the retail lines of andrographis, whether there are some good ones and bad ones. I, I just know that I, I don't even um, go there. <laughs> I, you know, I'm a, you fortunate know that I can access the Mediherb ones. Another, um, actually a warming herb. <laughs> yeah. If you want to do <laughs> it with the andrographis is, uh, <laughs> is the horseradish. And it's very warming, you know, it opens up your sinuses. So if a lot of people are having colds and they're having sinus problems and stuffiness, um, this is, you know, wasabi, which is meant to use with sushi, but you can also like grind your own, like get a root of the horseradish and, you know, use it with roast beef or, um, you know, even uh, just put it in a tea and let it, um, you know, soak into there. It really opens up the nasal passages. Um, it's very warming as well, so if you're feeling really chilly as a cold and you want something just to give you that boost um, to your immune system as well as to the respiratory system, you can use excellent any form yeah, of that as well. And great for <laughs> symptomatic relief. Now, have you used the Manuka honey before? I have, yes. Um, I've used it straight off the spoon. I've also put it in teas. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're unable to get to a, a professional herbalist or naturopath or chiropractor or a healthcare professional that it's friendly to natural health. Um, most stores, even Kroger's, will carry uh, a lot of the traditional medicinals brand, and the mm -hmm. Manuka goes great in there. Um, this has uh, diaphoretic herbs in it, as well as um, some antimicrobial herbs, the, the clove flower, but it is better to use it in a liquid, um, your herbs, when you especially have symptoms in the throat and the sinuses because so it can yeah, it's, it's going to be soothing that demulcent activity yeah. and you're going to have that topical antimicrobial activity. Which I think you had the slippery elm as well. Yes, and those are lozenges. Right, and these are very soothing to the throat. So if, you're, you know, if your throat is sore and it's hard to swallow, the slippery elm you know, coats the throat and it heals it. Um. And slippery elm is the main ingredient mm -hmm. in the organic throat coat. Right. So if you like the taste of the teas, like what else do you have there? Well, this has licorice, slippery elm, um, and then another licorice form and a concentrated extract with marshmallow. Then it has a little wild it's cherry. Marshmallow is very coating and yeah, soothing as well. well. Yeah, very good. And then it has wild cherry bark in it, which old Smith Brothers cough drops, I mean, they, mm -hmm. they were herbalists that put that formula together. Nowadays, I don't know. I haven't gone back to re-research what other ingredients are in the modern day Smith Brothers cough drops, but um, you so don't want to get a meant, lot of sugar, you know. Right, most of these are meant to taste good, but if you don't right. like the taste of a certain one, you can always add the honey and it will taste a little bit sweet, right. especially for children. A lot of kids will drink teas, but if they're, you know, certain kids, like I don't like chamomile tea, a lot of people really like it and that's their go-to yeah. for certain things, but if you don't like a certain herb, then try a different preparation or put something in it um, that will change the flavor a little bit. And and then and this is the other one that I use from the professional line. And then I'll get into the more of the retail things that are easier to find. Um, this has licorice in it. And licorice is topically demulcent, soothing. It is anti-inflammatory. And it also has topical antiviral activities. Not systemic, but topical. So it has thyme in it. The leaf of thyme has an oil that is um, antifungal and antimicrobial. And when you do it in this liquid, it will stand up into the sinuses. You have a warm, moist environment when you have a cold, so that is very opportunistic for the fungal spores that are always in the air, um, making a home in your sinus cavities and later on developing into a chronic sinusitis. In fact, the Mayo Clinic did a study um, that they reconfirmed where they took nasal swabs of patients with chronic sinusitis and 96% of them tested positive oh. for one form of fungus infection or another. Right. So this is where we'll move on into the other things in, in steam inhalations, et cetera, and how those would be beneficial. But before we do, other things that are available at health food stores, elderberry flower sources, 
more for a flu. Yeah. Versus exactly. a cold, but it's Correct. it's all like viral. It, the viral, yes, exactly. Which um, they taste good. Yes, they're generally made to taste like a syrup. <laughs> right. Yes. So the elderberries in there. This one is gaining popularity. Um, Pelargonium is the name of the plant, and there's a lot of research going on with it, but very positive results with um, colds and flus. And in America, the, the best brand to get is anything that is referring to it as the umka. This is more of a homeopathic, but it's in a, a, a glycerin-type base and, and also tastes good, easy for kids to do. So symptomatic relief. Um, throat sprays, there's a number of those uh, out on the market. I'd recommend something that has, um, well, maybe a little licorice in it, something that's going to be antiviral, antimicrobial, and um, an other antimicrobials are things like calendula, um, uh, golden seal, mm -hmm. propolis. And there's Which a lot of good ones. A out side there. note: It's just with the licorice. You don't want to use, especially if you have a tendency towards, you know, high blood pressure. Mm. You don't want to use licorice for a long term, but acute term, it's fine. Yes. Um, you just want to, if you're going to use the whole licorice plant, just use it for an acute problem on a short term basis. Um, Breathe Easy Tea, another one. Um, this also is by traditional medicinals, just because I find they're very consistent with their product. I've been out to their their plant. And, and they're available yeah, readily. Yeah, and they're readily available. Breathe Easy is going to help with the sinus congestion. And um, as I was mentioning, diaphoretics, if you have a, a, a fever, um, ginger mm -hmm. is a wonderful warming herb. It's very good, especially if there's a, a fluish type of uh, thing going on in the intestinal tract called a stomach flu, because your primary flus are respiratory. But I find that uh, a chai tea, um, don't add the milk to it. A lot of people do, and it is yummy. But um, if you're going to add anything, maybe an almond, um, vanilla almond or something, or rice milk for the, the, uh, the chai part. But chai tea is very good and easy to get for calming down the stomach. Um, other respiratory uh, relievers are essential oils. And this is an old stick inhaler, and like the old Vic Sinex stick inhalers, um, you would just close off one nostril and sniff. This goes on airplanes with me because, you know, through the sinuses is a, a major route of uh, interaction with your mucosal membrane. So the essential oils in here, there's no petroleum in the Olbus, and they make an oil also that I refer to as a liquid Vix that can be put in um, vaporizers or nebulizers. This is a, uh, a nebulizer that's nice and small. It's about the size of a bocce ball. If you'll hold that, I'll just flip the lid. Um, and I, I didn't set it up, but uh, it's got all the bells and whistles for the amount of steam, the rate that it flows out at, and you just put your oils and distilled water in there and, and put that at your desk or your bedside table. Um, it's also good for the rest of the house, so exactly, nobody else, you know, yes, catches that's your true. illness that you have. And then another way to dispense your essential oils would be just to take um, a coffee mug. Everybody's got an old broken one around the house, but this is a nice one. And if you were to uh, have someone helping you, it would be ideal because when you um, first put hot water over essential oils, that first burst of steam is going to have a lot of the molecules in there. But if you can smell the molecules, even if it's not steaming, you're still getting the benefit. But if you just put um, an old as oil version of, of this brand, um, about six drops in the bottom, and have someone, while you're seated, pour water over the top, and then just make a mask over your nose and mouth, and capture the steam, breathe in through the mouth, in through the nose, and out through the mouth. And that's another way of getting essential oils. And then Vicks makes a big tabletop um, vaporizer, which are great for baby rooms. Mm -hmm. um, this one is also very good for baby. This is my favorite, but it's a lot more expensive than the easy one to find. And there's a number of essential oils, but the easy one to find is made by Olba's. Um, now you have just regular essential oils as well. Well, thyme oil is particularly antifungal, as I mentioned earlier about the, the Bronk Effect blend. 
Um, and then, you know, everyone has their favorite essential oil companies. I particularly like this brand. It's Snow Lotus. Um, and they have an antiviral blend. Um, they can custom blend, or you can custom blend if you buy the individual bottles. Mm -hmm. Also, the good thing for, you know, sore throats and sinuses, just, you know, what you have in the house is salt. Salt is very, um, you know, cleansing to the throat and the sinuses. So either, you know, put some in some water, warm water, and gargle with it. Um, this is sea salt, but if you don't have any sea salt on hand, just any type of salt, or put a teaspoon of the salt into a pint of water. Usually warm water is more soothing. And then either get a neti pot. You want to make sure it's sterile water. Either boil your water or get some sterile water because you're going to be introducing it into your nasal passages. So either get a neti pot or even I find um, if you have someone in your household that uses contacts, use one of those bottles um, for the liquid and fill it up with the salt water. You put that into one nostril, bend your so over a sink so that your nose is lower than your mouth. So you really want to bend down, pour it there, it'll drain, it'll fill up your nasal passages on one side, drain across to the other side and out, and that'll really get a lot of junk out, especially with the salt. You can use like a drop or two of um, grapefruit seed extract. Sometimes Ooh. people find that really helps. Yes. You just want one drop. That's, yeah. You don't want the extra strength, <laughs> you want the regular strength. Um, because otherwise it's too strong and it can burn. But just like one or two drops in like a half a cup of water, you know, is sufficient. But that in, in itself is very, um, you know, cleansing. Just the salt, if that's all you have, um, you know, to take care of it yes. until you can get to the strong. Excellent. Also, with, um, you know, just if you're starting to get sick, two of my favorite things is to use a cell salt called Ferrumfoss. And this one is for anything that's painful, redness, inflammation. So you get a start of a sore throat, you have no other symptoms. This is my go-to. Children love it. They taste good. Um, and it's very helpful to have around for any type of inflammation. And sometimes it can kick out a cold before it gets a, you know, a, a hold on you. Also, you know, the cold wet socks, which have you ever done this? I have not <laughs> done this. I've got another grandma's recipe <laughs> for, for ear infections, but you know, using which socks. Which this is, you know, what you do is when you're getting sick, right at the beginning, usually make sure your feet are warm. You don't want to put cold socks on cold feet. As you put cold socks on, they're wet, wring them out, and then put dry wool socks on top of it and you go to bed. And that really revs the, the temperature, the immune system, um, and helps to get rid of... Um, a cold sometimes right at the beginning. That is amazing. I'm going to have to try that one, Dr. It's White. It's called yeah. hydrotherapy. So anyways, I think we're out of time today, but there's a lot of good things out there for help in the cold and flu season. This was natural help for all ages, natural health for all ages, and look for future episodes. Thank you. Thank you.